It's Brenda with Happy Healthy Homemade, and today we're making my seeded gluten-free bread. First, we're going to make the seed soaker. What I love about seeded gluten-free bread is that the seed soaker creates this gel, which helps to trap some more of the air bubbles. And the different sizes of the seeds help to create a more even texture in the finished crumb. I like to make my seed soaker with three tablespoons of flax seed. That's about 30 grams. Three tablespoons of amaranth seeds. That's also about 30 grams. Three tablespoons of chia seeds, about 33 grams. Three tablespoons of unroasted and raw pumpkin seeds, also about 30 grams. 150 grams of water. Ideally, you'll have time to soak this overnight, but if you don't, you can use hot water here to speed up the process. The chia seeds tend to soak up a little bit more water than the other seeds, so I like to make sure that those are evenly distributed. All right, now I'm gonna let that soak overnight in the refrigerator. I made one last night that's ready to go for today. You can see that the seeds have absorbed all of the water and there is a little bit of a gel that has formed. So I'll just set that aside for now. Let's prepare our wet and dry ingredients. First, I'm going to proof our yeast. We're going to need 312 grams of warm water. I'm going to make sure that the water is under 104 degrees Fahrenheit to make sure we don't kill the yeast. We're going to need 12 grams of maple syrup. Now we need nine grams of instant yeast. I'm gonna give it a stir and then set it aside to proof. All right, let's mix our dry ingredients. We need 125 grams of sorghum flour. Now we need 125 grams of tapioca starch. Now we need 160 grams of brown rice flour, 10 grams of xanthan gum, seven grams of kosher salt. All right, we've got some foam from our proofing yeast. Right before we combine our wet and dry ingredients, I'm gonna add two eggs to our wet component. Mix it up, adding our wet to our dry ingredients. Now, since it is solidifying, I'm switching to a spatula. Every time I go around, I'm making sure to scoop from the bottom, which is where a lot of the dry ingredients will rest. You can see it's not a dry dough. It's more like a thick batter. When you're able to bring it all together, it's time to add your seed soaker. Now I'm going to fold the seeds into the dough and make sure they're evenly distributed. I can already feel that extra hydration from the seeds and the gel has changed the texture of our dough. It comes together a lot better now. We're ready to put this in a pan. To prepare my pan, I'm just gonna use the smallest drop of neutral oil and brush it along the bottoms and the sides. What I'm using here is a specially designed loaf pan for gluten-free breads. This pan is higher along the edges. That's because gluten-free breads need more support in order to stand up. They often end up being higher moisture content breads. And without gluten, it's very difficult to create enough tension for the bread to stand up on its own. So to have a tall pan like this can be really helpful. Now I'm going to put the dough into the pan. And it just kind of falls in towards the end. So we've collected most of the dough, still a little bit stuck to here. I take the spatula and press down, making sure it's distributed all the way into the corners and smoothing it out a little bit. If you find that your dough is stickier than you would like at this point, you can always wet your spatula, which will prevent the dough from sticking to it. Here, I've just got a wet rag that I'm gonna place on top to make sure that the dough stays hydrated. As soon as it dries out on top, it prevents it from rising. The wet cloth also keeps the dough from sticking to the cloth after a rise. So right now, the dough is covering about half the pan. It's up to around there. And by the time we're finished rising, it should be up to the rim, if not a little bit over the rim. 
I like to make sure that the dough is rising in a warm environment. This is a proofer. I've set it to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. I, I know you're thinking, well, yeast dies at 104 degrees. I have not found that the temperature inside the proofer actually gets to 105 degrees, which is why I put the thermometer in the dough. At the 105 degree setting for me, the dough usually ends up being in the 80s, which is a good temperature rise. I'm going to let this rise around 40 minutes and the dough will start to reach the top of the bread pan. It's been around 45 minutes and our dough has risen to the top. Let's take a look. Wow, what a beauty. Our temperature reading right now is 90 degrees. So right on point. And now I'm going to put this in a preheated oven that's set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes or until it reaches 195 degrees Fahrenheit inside. So once the 40 minute mark hits, I'm going to test the bread every five to 10 minutes to see when it's done. One thing to know is that my oven is set to convection. So you may want to set your oven at a higher temperature than what I'm doing. I'm also going to put one cup of water into a tray in the oven to get a nice brown color on the top of the bread. It's been 40 minutes. I'm gonna check the internal temperature of the loaf and see if we've reached 195 degrees. Success. So here we've got a beautiful loaf nice and solid. What I'm going to do is take it out of the pan and let it cool on a rack. I usually let these set overnight and cool completely because there's still a lot of moisture in the crumb. And for gluten-free bread, that all needs to set so that we can have a clean slice. If for whatever reason your bread does not release cleanly, you can take an offset spatula or butter knife and try to release it. I usually find that when it's completely done cooking, the sides will pull in from the pan and that will help with the release. So it's also possible that if your sides are sticking, it's not completely cooked. All right, we'll let that cool and then come back tomorrow to slice it. I kept my bread wrapped in a tea towel overnight I like to avoid using plastic if I can, so this is a great solution. And with a high moisture bread that gluten-free is, it doesn't need a plastic wrap to retain the texture. It can last like this in the refrigerator for a week at least. If you do want to freeze the bread, you should pre-slice it before freezing it. Now I'm going to cut it open, show you the crumb, and we'll have a taste. I've just toasted my bread and it has a wonderful texture. It is soft and fluffy on the inside. I'm just doing a little bit of butter and apricot jam. I've got my jammy buttery toast and my shot of espresso. Just couldn't help myself. Let's take a bite. Wow, this toast has a better crispy crust than I've ever had from a store-bought gluten-free bread. The crumb is super balanced. It's not too dense and cakey, and it's not dried out. The seeds give it a wonderful extra crunch inside the crumb. I love this bread. It's one of the best gluten-free breads I've ever eaten, and I hope you get to make it at home. For more recipes like this, ring the bell, smash the like button, and leave a comment. I'll see you next time. Enjoy! Wow.